Thomas the Privatized Tank Engine. Written by Inkledon Clark and illustrated by Nick Clark, and I guess narrated by Train Boy. Thomas the Privatized Tank Engine first appeared in the pages of Private Eye in January of 1993 and rapidly established itself as a childish classic. It was based on an absurdly simple idea. What if the government were stupid enough to privatize the railways? It could never happen, of course, but children love the unbelievable, and incredible stories always become their favorites. Such are the delightful tales of incompetence, short-sightedness, and greed that make up this collection. They will transport you to another world, unlike the privatized trains, which wouldn't transport you anywhere. And whilst you're waiting for these trains not to arrive, you'll find Thomas the Privatized Tank Engine the ideal book to while away those long hours in the unheated customer service lounge. So join Thomas and his friends on their journey downhill fast. Let the great control or turn the clock back to the Victorian age and revel in the nostalgic feel of the 19th century railways of tomorrow. Next stop? Uh, there, there are no stops. So bravo, Thomas. Let's wave the flag, ring the bell, and blow the whistle on the government. Ian Hislip, editor for The Private Eye. The Great Controller says this station is too short, said Thomas's driver. It was early in the afternoon, and Thomas was approaching a country halt. Ah, it will be good to see the platform get extended at last, replied Thomas. As he drew up, he saw the Fat Controller struggling to nail a notice to a lamppost. Excuse me, sir, said the Fat Controller to a man waiting for the train. Would you be kind enough to fix up this notice? My doctor has forbidden me to knock. The thin passenger's jaw dropped when the fat controller, panting and sweating, handed him the hammer and the notice. No, I jolly well shall not, he exclaimed. What the devil do you mean by notice of closure? It is to be closed on safety ground, sir. The train is longer than the platform. So what? I'll have you know I've used this station every day for 14 years and there's not a scratch on me. It is conceivable, sir, that one of our customers might injure himself by stepping out of a carriage door which is opposite the platform. Oh, nonsense, said the thin man, climbing aboard Clarabelle. I am afraid the rules and regulations state that this station is too short, sir, said the fat controller. And it's more than my job's worth, to. I'll see you in court, said the thin passenger. The following Monday, Thomas sailed straight past the closed station. As he did, he saw a flashing blue light on a nearby road. Look, an accident, said Thomas. Passing by, he saw the body of a thin man sprawled across the front of a car. Oh, I guess he won't be seeing the fat controller in court after all, said Thomas. Must have been walking to the bus stop, observed the driver. I wonder, will they close the road on safety grounds too? Oh, don't be silly, Thomas. Closing a road is more than any job's worth, even the gray controllers. 